Okay, so how do I take this branch right here and this branch right here, create an overall pattern? Again, and so these two images started as sketches in a sketchbook. They were scanned, brought into Illustrator, turned into vectors, and now in this next video, I want to show you how you can take these two pieces and turn them into an overall pattern. Step one, and again, there's many ways to do this. I'm going to show you a way that I manage this with my workflow. Workflow. So I'm going to come on in and I'm going to come File New. And I always begin by just creating a tile, a pattern tile. Now, I'm making mine 4 by 4 You could change this if you'd like to. Um, you do not need to work in a square. And actually, why don't we look at it this way? Why don't I instead change this one up and I'll make this 6 by 4 Excellent. 6 by 4 Beautiful. All right, so to begin, I am going to select this vector image and very easy, edit, copy, and I'm going to bring over to my tile and I'm going to say edit, paste. There we have it. Now I'm going to come over to my next one and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come over, I'm going to say edit, copy, and I'm going to come to this one and I'm going to say edit, paste. Beautiful. Now, the one great thing about Illustrator, when we move things over I always say this area around it, it's like our desk. So we can go and just let vector things rest over there. And I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. And I'm going to resize these guys. They're too big. So what I want to do is I select them with my black arrow. I'm going to come to one of the corners. Now it's really important when you come to a corner is hold down shift. Because when you hold down shift, it will lock in the relationship between the width and the height. Okay. Now let's say that I didn't do that. And I just came in and I just started going. So see how we can warp the relationship between the width and the height. Okay, beautiful. So I'm going to take this guy. I'm going to move it on over. And I'm going to begin. So I'm going to grab this, move it over, take it, flip it around, make this a little bit bigger, grab this guy, bring it on over, flip it around. My thought is that these ones would come in smaller and this one right here would be bigger. Now, I definitely want to change the color, right? So that is for sure. So I want to come on in and color, color, color. Um, let's go for that one. Okay, now, um, all right, so I put that in the stroke. I didn't want to do it in the stroke. I wanted to put it in into there. Excellent. Looks like I may have put a fill in on this one. I must have done something. So sometimes maybe we even want to do it one by one. Better idea. I'm going to click onto this guy. I'm going to change the color. Coming a little bit more in between the green and the blue. Excellent. Um, I'm going to click onto this guy. Again, don't want that to happen. I'm just going to come in and select this color. Actually, I'll grab my A. That will select it. Excellent. Now I'm going to come and I'm going to grab my eyedropper and I'm going to sample the color from here. Okay, that's exactly what I wanted to happen. Beautiful. Not so wild about the color. Again, I could spend lots of time working and changing this color up. So, but I'm going to leave it as it is for right now. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to come in, I'm going to select this, shift click, select this, edit, copy, edit, paste in front. I'm going to take this, I'm going to flip it around, start moving things over, right, however we see this all working out. I'm going to do another pasting. Let's see, let's select these two. Move these guys around. Now again, remembering that everything that I run off the page um, is going to have to refit onto the page. Moving this guy on over, 
this one up. Again, I'm going to let this come on over to this page over here. One more. Flipping this around. Moving this on over. All right. So now again, you can really take your time with these decisions. Uh, moving this on up, over and up. Now some of these have the white in the center and some do not. So we could look at that. Um, I can see that there's white in this one and then I think I've moved some of the white over. Um, how do I know what's going on with that? Well, this is a really good thing to do before you start going, right? Is come on in, let's change this color. Object arrange, let's send it to the back. So I can see there are some of these white areas clicking through and I wanna, I wanna, I'm gonna get rid of this white. So how do I do that? Well, I can come on in, I can select it. Whoopsie, okay, that's not what I wanted to do. I can select it with my white arrow and then I can come to select same fill color and I can delete it. Okay, so now that is all gone. Again, we don't always see that when we're working on a white background, right? Okay, so here goes. All right, so the next thing that I wanna do is I am going to start working and making things place the way that I want them to be. All right, before I do that though, I am going to click onto this guy, bring this guy on down here. And I wanna move this one down a little bit as well. Right to there, okay. Now again, we can totally you know, continue to work with things and make things change around as much as we'd like to. But in order to create a seamless pattern, this is what we are going to do. I'm gonna zoom it on in. So what I've done is I've let my pattern run off the width and the length and I usually just do on one side, I find that it makes it a little bit easier. So here goes. Now what I need to do is I need to select what's running over and bring it over to this side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off my stroke and my fill, and I'm going to just come and grab a rectangle, it's an empty rectangle, and I'm going to run this so it intersects with what is running off the page. Okay, so now I also need to select what is inside of here. So I'm just gonna grab the white arrow and I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna come on in and again, I'm gonna draw around what is there. Okay, now if you have an a image that's not complicated, you could go edit, copy, edit, paste and move it over. Um, you could also just move it and it would move. Now, I wanna show you what happens. As I start moving this though, see it's, it, it's not working out so well, right? Um, so I need to approach this one a little bit of a different way. Um, thank God for Command Z, Edit Undo, always does what it needs to do. Okay, let's do Edit Redo, Edit Redo Rectangle. Okay, again, I'm going to select this one more time, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to have to do with this. I'm going to create a clipping mask. So again, I have the rectangle, and I have selected what I want to copy and I am going to come to object, I'm going to come to clipping mask, and I'm going to say make. Now, what's happened though is everything's disappeared. Hmm. So this is what I wanna do. I have this piece right here, which I want. I'm going to copy and paste this, so I have two of them. So I'm gonna to come to edit, copy, and I'm gonna say edit, I'm gonna paste it in front. Beautiful, okay. So now what I wanna do is I wanna move this one over. So I'm going to start to move it, and I'm going to hold down Shift. Is it moving? There it goes. Beautiful. So here it goes. I'm going to keep moving it, moving it, moving it, moving it. Again, I'm going to come. Yikesies. If I hold down Shift, it will keep it. So it's all parallel, I wanna bring this right in here, and that actually works. Now, for this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to release the clipping mask. I'm gonna to come to Object, and I'm going to come to Clipping Mask, and I'm gonna say Release. Excellent, beautiful. Okay, there we have it.
All right, so I have this little piece and now I have it repeated again over here. I'm gonna do the same at the bottom. Again, this is a little bit more complicated, um, but we're working with clipping masks to make this image work. Okay, here goes. I'm gonna come on in, grab my rectangle. It's all turned off. Again, I'm going to come on in and I'm going to draw so it intersects, which is what I want, beautiful. Next thing is I need to come in and I need to select what's in here, like so, excellent. I'm gonna come on in, object, clipping mask, clipping mask, where are you? Right in front of me, there we go. Clipping mask, make, beautiful. I'm gonna come edit, copy, edit, paste in front. I'm going to grab my black arrow. I'm going to start moving this guy. Again, I'm gonna hold down shift so it just moves directly up. I'm gonna line this on up here. Now it's overlapping so I can change that all up in a minute. Now for this one, I'm gonna come back right here and I'm gonna to come to object and I'm gonna to come to clipping mask. I'm gonna re, ah, whoopsie. I'm going to come to object clipping mask and I am going to release my clipping mask. All right, so I hit the wrong thing. So I wanna hit release. So I'm gonna click onto this guy one more time. Third time's a charm. Clipping mask, release. Okay, beautiful. That's what I want. All right, so now these are overlapping. So I wanna actually move this guy around, right? Come on in, move him around. Maybe flip him up a little bit. See what happens. Take this guy, move him on down. Maybe even make him a little bit smaller. All right, and I think that that all works. Now, as I look at this too, I might wanna add more of this. Maybe I wanna come take this guy, edit, copy, edit, paste in front, bring this on over here. Maybe I wanna flip this around. Uh, maybe I want another one of this as well. Paste it one more time. And again, once I make my pattern, I can change this all up as much as I'd like to. Okay, so I think that this is moving along beautifully. Now, my last step is I'm going to get rid of these guys with yet another clipping mask. So I'm gonna come on in, turn off the stroke. I'm going to grab an empty rectangle and I am going to draw a rectangle that is going to select this all right in here. Excellent. And I'm going to come to select all and object, clipping mask, make. Voila, now I have my image and I'm ready to turn it into a pattern. So here goes, I'm going to click onto this. I'm gonna to come to object and I am going to come to pattern and I'm going to hit make. And I'm going to say, okay, yes, yes, yes. I'm gonna hit okay. All right. Save a copy. All right, let's take a look here. I'm gonna make this one into a grid. And it looks like it's measuring the whole size. I wanna size the tile to the art. That's what I wanted, okay? So what happened was um, when that came in, it wasn't looking quite right. And it's always good for you to see sometimes when things go wrong, so you know what to do. Beautiful, that's exactly what I wanted. I needed to make sure that I sized the tile to the art because I did this whole thing really focusing in to a four inch by six inch sample tile. And now I have my pattern. Beautiful. I'm going to save a copy of this. I'm gonna name this sketch. I'm gonna hit okay. And I'm gonna hit okay. I'm gonna hit done. Okay, there we go. What do I need to hit? Now, this is four by six. So now I'm gonna try this out on another artboard. There's my little sample. And I'm gonna come on in, I'm gonna draw an artboard. And what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that it is a measurement, it's gonna to relate to four by six. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my width four, eight, 12, 16. I'll make my width 16, four, eight, 12, 16. All right, four by six. Okay, let's do this again. So I'm gonna make my width 18, okay? And I will make my height 
All right, let's figure out this math. 6, 12, 18, the height will be 12, right? Okay, so what that was is um, each one had three inches added to it. Okay, let's give it a shot. Now I'm going to come on in. I'm going to grab onto this guy. I'm going to grab my rectangle tool. I'm going to come on in. And there I have it. Really liking this. All right, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click onto this guy. I'm going to come edit, copy, edit, paste in front. Now let's make sure, is this seamless? Let's see. And what I mean is it's seamless. Is it, will it line up? And yes, it will. So why would I want it to be seamless? And I've talked about this in prior videos. Let's say that I wanted to take a sample and I wanted to send it to spoon flower. That's my example. Or I wanted to use it as a background and I wanted to make sure that it was tiling or I wanted to print it on wallpaper. Um, I would need to make sure that it was seamless. So when I sent a swatch to a printer, uh, that that swatch would just, they could put it in, they could just put the word tile and it would line up properly. So we always want to check, we can check both sides and we can come on down here and let's see, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. We can come on in and there we have it. It's seamless, my friends. Beautiful. Uh, one more thing I want to take a look at. What would happen if I chose to put a color behind this? I could do that as well. So I could come on in, I could grab a rectangle. Sometimes I could click just like this and say, I know that this was 18 wide and 12 high. Am I right? Here's hoping. I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to change the color. And I really liked when I was in earlier in the video, I chose this like nice light green. Object arrange, send to back. Move this on down. Zoom it on in. There we have it. Thanks so much for listening. I'm um, looking forward to share your projects. Uh, any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks so much.